Here at Historical Recreations, we love a good challenge. Have you ever seen a two-headed calf? Well, if you have, you're lucky. Uh, they do exist, and we need to build a two-headed calf prop to put into a photo shoot for the uh, photo shoot called the Curiosity Shop. And this project, I will start off very quickly, may take weeks and weeks to do. So I will be filming and documenting blow by blow how we build a two-headed calf from the ground up. I've assembled here pieces of wood that I will need to build the structure frame for it. Now what I have here is some wooden dowels that I got from our local supply store. And I'm using some plastic pieces that were the right size. And then this will be the spine of the animal here. This would be the back, the hip bone, and then the legs. What we're going to do today is we're going to get a piece of foam. We're going to measure this out and we're going to assemble this into the shape of an animal's carcass. I'm going to be using just scotch tape and I'm going to be just taping up the edges. There's no need to build a solid frame on this because the calf is so tiny. The average size calf is two and a half to three feet uh, to the shoulders. So basically I want also this to be flexible and soft and not rigid. It took me about a few moments to tape up the sticks to the plastic. Once you get there, you're already getting the shape of the cow. So we're going to start that. And I also have got this beautiful piece of polystyrene today. And we're going to cut this and we're going to make a base now to put our cow on. Once we have our places where the legs are going to go marked out on our base, now we're going to use a coat hanger to drive it up underneath here to create a support system. I cut my coat hanger now into sections, discard that piece, and we're going to use this now for the support. Driving the wires up and back, I just very carefully tape them to the foam. Anything and everything in prop making can be covered up. Now that's going to be the support system for our legs. Once you have the wooden dowels now attached to the coat hangers, now comes the strengthening and structural part. And now that we have our baby calf frame in place, now we can start using newspaper and start building up the muscle mass. You've got to remember that with a baby calf, they've got a barrel chest and a curved back. So that's what we're going to establish today. Also, putting muscle into the legs and the rear end. Let's do it. You're going to need a lot of newspaper for filler. And you can start crunching up into balls. And we're going to start taping it together to form muscles. Really, after putting the newspaper on and crinkling it up, you can already see the body is forming. Just getting down the basic anatomy form of the calf is very important. At the moment, it kind of looks like a sheep, but we're going to shape that more into our calf form. Very important piece of the calf is to make sure that the, the butt end of the calf sticks out and then you're going to have the indentation and then the calf muscle comes out and then straight down and then comes the hoof. Maybe when you were a child you heard the expression how now brown cow? Well today we're going to be looking at the cow's eyeballs and as a prop maker I had found these four knobs that was on a uh, rack for clothes. Actually there's five of them. There are two whites and three blues, but I'm going to need four of them because of our two heads. And we're going to transform them today into cow's eyes. Now when you're looking at the eyeballs of a cow, the amazing part is to see that how it looks is like this. When there's bright light outside, the cow's iris shrinks down to kind of a hot dog shape. And the brown, which is very translucent folds up around it. I saw a scientific photograph of a cow's eyes and I was amazed. Now I want to show you something else that they are not perfectly round but they are shaped more like this. They are, this is the circle and it, they're collapsed. There is a white section at the top and at the bottom. Now if you just put this all together we have a cow's eyes.
Now I know there's going to be people out there that are cow specialists. I have a good friend named Dr. Joy. She's a cow specialist. She might think that's not what a cow's eyes look like, but for a prop that's going to be in the back of a room for a photo shoot, believe me, it's going to look like a cow's eyes. The first thing we're going to do today is we are going to completely coat all four of our spears white to create the eyeball illusion. Our color palette today is going to be a 600 shield white acrylic, a 560 black acrylic. I'm using what brand is this? This is Shin Han. I'm also going to use some Alpha Burnt Umber 19 and a Brown Red 41. Also, with my brushes today are going to be quite fine. I'm using three types of brushes which are very smaller than normal. They're all soft bristle. Right, take my stick, put it up there to hold it because it has the part in the back. And we are going to paint all four of our lenses white. And if you notice how I'm using the brush strokes, I'm creating a downward stroke. I'm not going all over the place. So I'm going along the sphere of the eye. Actually, this is quite relaxing to do. Once I get most of my eye co covered, I'm going to put this under a hair dryer. And voila, for the sake of the show, I painted all four of them and put them under the hairdryer and they are now done. So let's move on now to the iris part. Now over here, I'm going to be putting my cow's eye out for reference. I didn't realize how beautiful their eyes were. They're big and soft and they had all kinds of uh, like eyelashes that hang down over the eye very protectively. So with our eye, now we're going to have to create that oval. Our next part we're going to start doing is we're going to mix up the iris part of the cow. I am using here a brown red. I'm going to pop in my white. And then I'm going to mix in my burnt umber. Now once you get all four of your eyes painted, we're going to go in here and make a darker halo around the iris. I'm now just rolling my brush into the brown red. I'm now going to create a halo around each and every one of the irises.
I'm pulling the brush up strokes. Now I'm going to do all four of my eyes. Getting all my eyeballs set up. Now that we've got our halo around the iris part of the eye, we're going to now go into the center and make our pupil. I'll be using the burnt umber today. Once you get all four of your cow's eyes done, this is part one of the eyes. Part two is we're gonna mix up more color for the interior part of our irises. Once I've got our irises dried, I'm gonna now mix a small measurement of a shield acrylic gold. This is a 670 into our burnt umber to create the iridescent look of the cow's eyes. We're going to do a modeling effect. We want the color below it to come through. Let's do all four of them. Now once we get to this stage, we're going to actually go right into half gold and half burnt umber and we're going to do one more modeling around this but I'll be using our smallest brush to create the waves and the lines and the speckles that I need to put in there and the last thing we're going to do is once these eyeballs are dried completely we're going to put a sheen coating over them to make them shiny. Right now I'm mixing half gold and half burnt umber together. This should be the darkest of all the coating. Whenever you're doing prop making, and this is very important to know, layeration, the layering up paint makes things look more and more realistic. Not just one coat, but multiple coats. Aging process made it possible. Like that. I'm going to do all four of them. At times, being a prop maker can seem kind of creepy, but it's very rewarding. Our last part of this, we're going to put on a sheen coating and then let them dry. This product here is called a gloss varnish. You can get it at pretty much any paint store or any supply center. This will be the sheen that we need to put on our eyes. All we need is just a little bit. Okay. We're now going to make these eyeballs come to life. This one looks like it right at the moment. It looks like it's diseased. <laughs> Application of the sheen just to the surface. I'm going to wipe off the excess. Now we're going to let that air dry. I'm going to do that to all four of them. I can't wait to see what this is going to look like in the head of our calf. Our third phase of making our two-headed cow today is day three, and uh, we're looking into the heads. Ha <laughs> ha! How are we going to do that? I'm going to give you a list today. The first thing you're going to need, above all, is this. Some newspaper to put down because of the dust that these foam blocks, the Oasis foam blocks create. I am choosing an Oasis floral foam and it gets dusty. Now if you have an allergy or any type of thing where you're going to be inhaling this stuff, you might want to wear a mask and I do have a mask put aside just in case it gets too dusty. So we're going to talk about that. Next thing we're going to need, you may need today a heavy wire and a soft wire and a natural blade.
My first part is I'm using two floral foam box together and then I am going to create a diamond shape for the pattern. Now, the calf's heads are relatively sized and I took a piece out of here just to show up for another demonstration but I believe that's, that's good enough here. We're going to cut the nose off there. But a calf's head would be within that size. Now if you put this up to our two-headed calf body, you're going to see it's relevant. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to cut off the excess and let's see if we can put this together. This stuff cuts like a dream. Prop makers love foams. And they're really easy to work with and I can't think of a foam that is more easier than floral foam. I can't think of any foam that I've ever used that is as easy to work with. It does have a, it does gives off, it gives off a slight dust though. Do not get this foam wet. If you are going to use this for a project, do not get this foam wet. It will take weeks to dry. I had a block of floral foam that I tried to dry out. It took weeks and it's still wet. Okay, you can already see now the shape starting to form of our calf's head, right there. The next part is putting the two pieces together. Now, you can use wire to put the two pieces together. You can drive the coat hanger through here. Uh, I may try to use an adhesive on this. This is one of those creative thoughts. But before I do, I also need to get a sketch of the head so we can start cutting and shaving down to the nose and nostril areas and making sure the eyes are in the right place. And we made the eyes a day ago so we can put the eyes into our calf's head. So now I roughly brought in my sketch which will show. As, as designers we mark up everything before we do something. So here I had to look at the uh, face of the, the head of the calf to find out what is the natural shapes of it? So you have an upside down uh, diamond tear here, the same over here, and the ears will go up here. But we're gonna be taking a lot off of this, so there's gonna be a lot of reduction on this. Uh, we also have to make sure that we have the nose in the right place here, and then we're gonna be taking this off and then sculpting it to, to make the mouth. So that is our basic shape. Now that I've got my sketch marked up here. I'm going to just put the two pieces together. Uh, a couple things you need to know is that when using floral foam, uh, the, I found out the adhesive that would fuse these two together uh, is not hot glue. It doesn't work. Uh, florists use a special type of tape that they would tape this product together and it used for uh, wet and uh, we're putting in the containers. But so far, this is not bothering me. I thought I, thought I was going to have a lot of dust in my, in my face, but I'm not. We're also going to have to take this sculpture that we're making, and I have to go to the, the body, and I have to compare to make sure it's the right size, because we don't want a head that's too large. Okay, I think it's a good idea now to take this head over to the body. We've got a lot of stuff here at the prop shop, so I'm bringing the head over. Now, if I were to put the head right there, that would work pretty well, but we're going to have two of them. So, these heads need to be a slightly smaller, because I'm going to have a head on this side and a head on this side. So we need to sculpt this down much more because it's going to be the same size appropriately as the body. 
too much off at the beginning because we're going to keep seeing where it is. And I also need to know where the calf's eyes are going to go. We're going to be right there and there. Good, we're on the right track and now I am cutting away to the shape of the nose. Got to make sure the nose is highlighted here. Uh, any pieces that are missing that you might have cut away too much on is not a problem because with uh, feel of clay you can always build it back up again. So we need to create a nose and also the mouth is going to be down here on our calves. So we're going to have to make two of these guys. So what I will do is I will sculpt the second one and I'm going to put them side by side. But before I do, I want to show you, this is what we took off of our calf's head. Very important, putting the two new Oasis floral foam boxes together. And I am taking our current head and I'm putting it right there as a measurement using my blade. I'm going to trace out the lines of this head so I know exactly the size of the second one. Now comes the exciting part because we have the two calf heads cut to size. Now we have to make a choice based on photographs. Do we want them to be locked together like this? Do we want them up like this? Do we want the skulls fused together? There's so many different options here. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to go look at historical pictures of calves that were born with two heads and make a decision. So it is the two heads approximately the same size. I had looked at historical pictures of two-headed calves, black and white and color, even someone who actually mounted one after taxidermy just recently. And the best one that I saw is where the two heads were at this angle and they were fused together so those calves couldn't even see each other. So our next step is to create two the two calf heads at that angle. What I do is I had to come up with a sketch and this is what I came up with. Uh, the calves did not look at each other so there was a division of the skull on either side. They could see out the eyes but they could not see each other. So this is the sketch I came up with and this is how we're going to attach the skulls. Okay, here we have black latex paint and now I'm going to be painting the calf's body to see where I need to fill in. Okay so now I'm painting all of our tape over so now we can see what we have fill in where we need to smooth it out and where the flocking is going to go. I had a very special announcement to make. This is pretty good. I like this. I'm doing the whole entire body. And we got our calves heads back again. I got to point out a couple things that we're going to be building up a nose over here out of uh, Fila clay. Uh, we're going to gouge the areas over here to put insert the eyeballs. But before we do, we got to put these two pieces together. We have to like build them. So I'm using here uh, a soft coat hanger. What I mean by soft, or not, it's because it's very easy. It's a very thin, very thin coat hanger uh, to to cut. I mean, it doesn't take any stress at all here to do this. And I'm going to be using these pins basically, and I'm be putting the pin in here and in here. Hopefully, I got that aligned. There it is. Exactly. I'm going to do two of them. Take that out of there. Make that a little bit shorter. Half. And what we're also going to do is we're going to glue, glue the two pieces together. And I want to cement this with some Elmer's glue. So let me, yeah, this is kind of a messy job. I'm applying it in here. Um, not too much sticks to floral foam. 
So we're going to have to also make sure we paint the floral foam afterwards with a complete coat so it fuses together. And I'll show you how to do it. All right, we're gonna let these sit and dry. I get to share the fabric story now. Uh, back in July when I started the project, it is now October, I was, <laughs> I was wearing shorts at the time. Um, I had this fabric sample uh, to coat the calf in. So it had that nice sheen to it. It had a real good look to it. It was just too dark. So. Putting that aside, I had to wait months and months. So I went down to the vendors to try to get fabrics to coat the calf. They didn't have the right color. They didn't have the right fabrics. So I even wrote to the United States. I had a sample come in. It was linen. I couldn't use that one. Finally, da -da -da, I've waited. It is time to coat the calf with the right color, this calfy caramel color, and then uh, it's soft, it's malleable, it can shape around the calf very easily. So I'm very excited to start the coating process, but before we do that, we've got to finish the heads. Going into the calf head, we had it shaped, we glued it together, that took quite an experience. Uh, we need to implant the eyes in here, plus we also have to build up the forehead. We're also going to create a fila uh, nose, we're going to actually we put the ears in here, so this is going to be quite the process, so let's start that today. Looking at some of the, the photographs I've seen of two-headed calves, of course, the heads are not this way. They're actually this way. So there has to be some foam that has to be removed over here. So the shape of the head has to be refined. And then we're going to fuse the two together. I'm going to have to drive a piece of wire through here and also build a neck on the back of this so it can be put on the calf. So we've got quite a bit of work to <clears throat> be established today and the first thing I wanted to do was uh, get these two pieces fused together. There it is, all, all crooked and everything. We're going to put the, the head of the calf right here. Now the great part is that we also have to build a little bit of a neck and neck extension on that. That's not going to take very much longer. That's going to be just a piece of newspaper with some tape around it and a wire being driven through here. So we're going to put the head on today. Let's do that. This is nothing more than a piece of coat hanger that I had cut off. I bent it in the right shape and I just poked it right through there. We're going to hot glue that in place. And next we're going to put the muscle up around there, which is newspaper. And um, let's get on up. More interestingly, I couldn't find any newspaper, so I just used some leftover tissue that I had. So that's it. I'm coating this now with my scotch tape, with the foundation. The hot glue gun is warming up. We're going to put that head on. Just a quick view. Two heads, wires going through there, neck muscles established. Now we've got to start building the rest of the calf. Before I go any further building the calf, I wanted to establish this type of construction that I'm doing is called soft construction. Anybody in their home can build what I'm building. That is the purpose of these videos. Uh, prop making, you do not need a huge studio, you do not need welders and sanders and all kinds of industrial equipment and, and material to build these things. You just need some tape, some wire, some cutters. And uh, <laughs> you just you can assemble these things very easily in your home. So tonight I mapped out the size of a calf's ear to the approximate size of what a calf's head would be if it was about the size of our project. And there is the head of the calf. Let me put this down here. There is the head of the calf right there. And then I had mapped out the size of the ears, and the ears match the approximate size. So what we need to do now is we need to cut out the ears of the piece to the size, and then we're going to add a bit of clay over here to mound them up. We need to shape them into a shape of a ear. If you're wondering what kind of scissors I'm using, I am using bonsai scissors. Someone asked me, what kind of scissors do you use? 
bonsai, they cut through PVC, they cut through anything really easily without having to, to destroy your paper scissors that you use in your home. that we're going to do all four of them and then we're going to put a piece of wire we're going to hot glue the wire to the back of that okay now that we've got all four of those hot glued in place we're going to let those dry i'm going to do a little bit more over here a little bit more crisscrossing so i want them to stay on and we're going to let them dry and then we're going to build them up with clay we're going to be using a high clay today and it doesn't matter what color because you're not going to see it because we're going to put uh, fabric over them. So I'm just going to squeeze out the fill of clay here and do a complete coating on top of this. Now, of course, calf ears are coned. They're actually, they're curved like this. So conceptually, this is what I came up with for a calf ear. Yeah, I think I'd like to have this a little bit more bent and I could put this in a mold and shape it and let it dry tonight i need to have two two nails on either side and if i'm going to do that i'm going to have to build something to do that but if not they're just going to be more out like that i don't know there's always a creative you have a creative thought pattern when you're you're making something but let's finish the other four and see what they look like so now you can see we've got left ear and right ear, and uh, of course I ran out of <laughs> one type of clay, so I had to use another, but no one's ever going to know that because we're going to cover these with fur. So let these dry for 24 hours, and let's see how they're going to Today we made up our ears. They are dry today. Now there's one thing that we need to do. Look at the fabric that we purchased online. That is the color. We need to mix up this soft camel color and put it on here and we also have to kind of I don't know coat that quite nicely this is all gonna be covered with fur so don't worry about the cracks that's not important uh, we need to cover this up so just in case something is exposed and we don't see it because it'd be kind of difficult once we put the fabric on there to put the paint in there to cover up anything so let's paint these this color let's mix that color up today to mix up our golden calf fur, we have four colors today. We have our white, we have our burnt umber, we have a gold, and we have a black. We have a 999, we have a gold 997, a burnt umber. What magic number is this? Hmm, is that the number? Yes, it does. 624, and we're also using a mixing white of 601, and they're all shield brand. Oh, three shields. Two shields and one, two alphas. All right, here we go. So first thing we want to do is we want to lay down our gold. And, uh, you probably say, well, that almost matches the, uh, the color of the fabric already, but it doesn't. Actually, in fact, it's too light. So we're going to have to go in with a little daub of black. We're going in with a small dab of burnt umber brown and our mixing white and I'm going to be putting up a very generous amount of this on my brush over here and let's start mixing this together
Bingo. Approximately the same color. All right, here we go. Let's cover the ears. Once we get our ears covered, even the cracks disappear, which is kind of nice too. Thanks for extra coating. Make sure we get the interior. That's very important for me. Interior of the ear. I'm using a one inch brush here. Okay, let's do all four of the ears. So tonight I am using my my special scissors tonight. I got some light glue. I got my hot glue gun up here and a small swatch of our calf skin. Uh, one hazard I've already come into contact with is that this fabric is very fibrous and it's floating around me and I can Imagine it going up my nose. I might need to wear a mask while I'm working with this project uh, material. But um, we got it to tonight. We're going to put the 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 fur in the ear, and you can see I've already coated it. So um, we want to go up and around it, and then we may even use some hairspray to move that into place. The one thing I really would like to have is the fur coming out, like it standing up. And then also on a calf's ear, there would be larger hairs that would stick out here. Now, I have a wig in my collection that I can very easily mix up this color and paint the fibers and then just hot glue them in there later. So let's coat this. I'm going to use some hot glue and some white glue and do it up. Let's see what it looks like. Fiber fast. This has been, it's the, the fabric that I had chosen was, it's a little bit on the, hard side to work with because a lot of fibers coming out but we can see it covered the ear quite nicely we still got the shape of the ear <laughs> fibers what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hairspray this and then I'm gonna slide this down with my my finger and move it around a little bit but we got that covered we got almost the back of it covered so we gotta gotta piece this piece in here but you can you can see it's it's coming along things one calf ear not slightly done let's hairspray this and see what it looks like and oh man we got a fiber fest going on here you can probably see that my work area is completely coated look at my hot glue gun oh my gosh looks like the fibers are winning anyways i gotta clean all this up anyways this is the first ear that we're doing i hairsprayed it down so the fibers are not coming out anymore but i gotta clean up this mess so let's clean up this mess and make the other three ears. I don't know if you can see this or not, but using the calf map there that I have used, this is the calf's face, putting that right on there, we have very, very carefully mapped out where the eyes are going to go, here and here. And we're also going to be using a very special tool today to dig that out. And I got my hot glue gun cooking over here to put those eyes in. So we have our eyeball. We have to remember that the eyeball is going to be this way because the calf's eyes are sticking out. We have to dig out an area. We don't want to go too deep and too far because I'd have to build up around it again with more fila clay. Uh, that's a very important thing to know that we're making the eye socket here, that fila clay is going to be used up around it to, to build the structure. Of the cow's eye. This clay is so easy to work with. Oh, it's not going in yet. Floral foam is the bomb. It is the most easiest. I'm just barely scraping this and it's just coming apart. Look at this. How easy that went in. Now, we want to put that in a little bit deeper because I can actually smell the glue gun 
warming up over here. Look at that. Dang. That was <laughs> nice. That is eye number one. We're going to put the other one on the other side. Once we get all four of the eyes set in there, and these are just sitting in there. They're not hot glued in yet. So if you wanted to move them around, you can very easily move them in any position you wanted to. So we're going to put our cow uh, template back over the face and see where we need to move them to. Putting on some fila clay around the eyes, making the connection between the two heads, building it up, and adding the ridges which will become the face. Please note that I'm wearing a mask now. This is very important. Why am I wearing a mask? I don't care about other people that are doing prop baking and they're saying, oh, you should be wearing a mask and you're not wearing a mask. I am wearing a mask today because I'm dealing with a lot of dust. The other thing we're dealing with is the floral foam and that has a particle dust to it. You don't want to get that stuff in your lungs. Also, our Two-headed calf has been sitting out. It's got a little bit dusty today. We are going to cover the backside with fur today. We're going to put some fur on there, probably up to the neck, and then I'm going to build up the frontal part of the forehead. So that's our work for today. Let's get that done. I had just finished a piece, cutting a piece of fabric off of our thing. You can see there's a significant amount of dust. Just <laughs> Cleaning the fabric piece before you put it on the cap. Just see, which is a few pieces, how the fabric covers up the whole entire body, and it just, it love how it just, it folds and drapes over there, so it's covering up. I'm cutting these pieces not on a uh, square, I'm cutting them on an angle, so they're all going to be angular. It's very important, if you do them in square pieces, it's like, where does it go? But angle pieces follow the line of the body. Okay, I'm just very, very easily hot gluing it around the edges. I'm not doing any other pieces. I'm not doing the fabric inside. And that's holding it right in place. Kind of like a toupee. 45 degree angle. Putting the fabric right along the edge. Folds over very, very well. Now you're just going to apply the hot glue down. Tack it in place. Fur will blend in beautifully. Oop, got the knife. Wow. <laughs> it's nice to actually see this after months becoming a real animal. Check it out. Fabric draping very nicely. I just took the mask off to breathe. <laughs> kind of nice. Uh, we have done a significant amount of work to putting the fur on the cow. We had built up the front of the face over here. And we're going to start building the noses tonight. That's a very, very important part because once we get the noses pinned on there, then we can finally finish the rest of these. Using some simple tools, some soft feel of clay, I'm going to start putting the noses on. So we're going to build up these noses to create them. I have to get some photographic re uh, reference to see what they look like. But we should have noses within about an hour. Noses were finished. And along with that, I put more structural material on the face to build up exactly where we want to do it. You can actually you can see it so much better now. Before, they just look like heart-shaped blocks. But 
we've got two calf heads fused together. Lastly, we need to let that set for a full 24 hours. Let's look down here. We have four hooves to add on this. Let's do that today. Wow, we got the hooves on here. What a daunting task that was. Here it is again. Hoofs on both sides. We have to wait a full 24 hours until they harden. Have dried. And so did the noses. So we get to paint those tonight plus around the eyes. Isn't that freaky?